Being an NBA champion is an honor. I'm sure every player who steps on the NBA court dreams about being a champion one day. But basketball is team sports and not everyone is fortunate enough to be a part of a team who's winning championships. There are a lot of NBA legends who are great players individually but never experienced the type of team success that would ultimately give them the honor of hoisting an NBA trophy above their head. Charles Barkley, John Stockton, Carl Malone, Steve Nash, Allen Iverson, Elgin Baylor, those are just a few of names that haven't been NBA champions. It doesn't take away that they were great players, but the ultimate goal is to win a championship and for them it never came true. Hey, hope you're doing well, I'm Purple Prince and today I want to talk about 5 solid NBA veterans who were fortunate enough to win an NBA championship because they were on a team with LeBron James. Let's start with Shane Battier, who is a two-time champion with Miami Heat in 2012 and 2013. Shane Battier was selected in 2001 by then Vancouver Grizzlies with the 6th pick. The 6'8 shooting forward spent his first 5 years with the Grizzlies being a solid starter. He was always recognized as a great defender and a 3 point shooter, basically your 3 and D guy who wasn't a star but definitely had his place in the league. The first stint with the Grizzlies didn't result in a notable playoff success though, so his next stop was Houston Rockets. In Houston he continued to play his role of a defensive stopper and 3 point specialist, starting almost every game and giving his share of points and defense. Playoff success? Well, not much different. Playing on a team with Yao Ming and Tracy McGrady unfortunately didn't get him far in the hunt for the NBA trophy. In his best season with the Rockets in 2008-2009, he got only to the second round of the playoffs and stopped there, losing in 7 games to Los Angeles Lakers. In 2011, right at the NBA trade deadline, Battier was traded back to the team that originally drafted him, Memphis Grizzlies. He spent only 23 games back in Memphis and after that he signed a contract with Miami Heat. That turned out to be a great decision by him, as he went on making 3 straight NBA Finals with the Miami Heat. He helped Miami win 2 of those and was a crucial piece for the Heat squad. After Miami lost in Finals to San Antonio in 2014, Battier decided to call it quits. Even though he didn't achieve a 3 beat, I think he retired in a pretty good mood. Getting those two rings at the tail end of his career should have been really nice. Another two time champion with Miami Heat is Mike Miller, who like Shane Battier won championships in 2012 and 2013. Mike Miller was drafted in 2000 with the 5th pick by Orlando Magic. He spent 3 years in Orlando upping his point production every year, in his last year with the Magic he was scoring 16.4 points per game, but it was his move to Memphis Grizzlies where he became the 3 point assassin we knew him to be. He played 6 seasons in Memphis scoring in double figures every season and making more than 40% of his 3 pointers in most seasons. In his best year, he averaged 18.5 points per game for the Grizzlies and he was contributing in other areas as well, dishing out 4.3 assists and grabbing 5.4 rebounds as a shooting guard. Afterwards, he spent a year in Minnesota which was his worst season up to date. He didn't average double figures in points and shot a lower 37.8% from 3 point range. Then he played one season with Washington Wizards, where he finished the season making unbelievable 48% of his 3 pointers. He was never going to win anything with Washington Wizards though, so he moved on to Miami. Mike Miller was one of players who boosted Miami Heat roster in the summer of 2010. Now on a team with LeBron James, Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade, his minutes dipped even further, but he was still doing his job, making 3 point shots. Miller was shooting poorly during the playoffs and I guess you could say that he didn't help Miami during the meltdown against Dallas Mavericks in 2011. First go round with Miami wasn't successful. Next two years however, Mike Miller was integral part in the playoffs and helped Miami secure two NBA championships. He was especially great in 2012 NBA playoffs against OKC Thunder, where he made 7 3 pointers in championship clinching game 5 of NBA finals. In a large part because of his great performance he could now call himself an NBA champion. He got one more ring next year when Miami Heat defeated San Antonio Spurs in 7 games to become back to back champions. His role compared to previous NBA finals was decreased though. He wasn't playing really well and even in game 7 he missed all of his 5 field goal attempts. After his diminished role to save money, Miami Heat amnestied Mike Miller and he had to continue his career elsewhere. He returned to Memphis where he spent most of his prime years, providing solid contribution from the bench, 
but he didn't get far in the playoffs and when LeBron returned to Cleveland Cavaliers, he decided to give it one more shot with his buddy. He wasn't playing a lot and Cleveland lost in NBA Finals against Golden State Warriors, after which his stint with Cavaliers was over. That was the last playoffs Mike Miller participated in and he spent his last two seasons of his career playing for Denver Nuggets mostly as a late game substitution. Next one is Richard Lewis who is a one time champion in 2013 with Miami Heat. Richard Lewis is probably the best player individually out of this bunch, but even his great production didn't result in a championship before he teamed up with LeBron. Drafted only in second round with 32nd pick, Lewis proved everyone wrong with his production and then Seattle Supersonics. Lewis spent his first 9 seasons with Seattle. For his first 2 seasons he was largely coming off the bench providing a spark with the second unit, but for the next 7 years he was one of the stars on the team, regularly averaging close to or over 20 points per game. His regular season success didn't transfer to postseason success though. His production dropped quite a bit in the playoffs and of the 3 playoff appearances only once he made it out of the first round with Seattle. His playoff success improved when Richard Lewis moved to Orlando Magic. Still a starting power forward, Richard Lewis was a major part of Orlando's offense. He played 3 full seasons with Orlando and even made an NBA Finals in 2009, where ultimately Orlando Magic fell to Los Angeles Lakers in 5 games. Playing alongside a superstar in Dwight Howard, he couldn't manage to capture the NBA championship, although he was solid, averaging 17 and 7. Next year he returned to NBA playoffs but couldn't repeat last year's success. During the 2010-2011 season, his role with Magic was starting to diminish and he was traded to Washington Wizards. In Washington, his role diminished even more, not to mention the role he was frequently injured or just didn't play. In two seasons with Washington he played just 60 games combined and didn't make the playoffs once, until he signed with Miami Heat to become LeBron's teammate. His role in Miami was clear coming off the bench and providing some scoring output. Lewis was past his prime but he was still a solid 3 point shooter. He didn't play much in the playoffs but he participated in 11 games and was drinking champagne in June with all other Miami Heat players after they beat San Antonio in 7 games. Next year he played more and helped Miami Heat to get to NBA Finals where they lost to Spurs and after that Lewis called it quits. But he got a nice parting gift in the form of NBA championship ring in previous season, so I think he's good. The fourth player is Channing Fry, who is a one time champion with Cleveland in 2016. Channing Fry came into league in 2005 when he was picked number 8 by the New York Knicks. Most part of his rookie season, Fry spent coming off the bench, where he right away showed his value to the Knicks. Playing just 24 minutes per game, he averaged more than 12 points and almost 6 rebounds. After a good rookie season, Fry's production fell off in his sophomore year. In his second season, Fry was starting almost every game and playing slightly more minutes, but he didn't reach double figures in points and his rebound rate dropped as well. Fry wasn't in New York's plans going forward, so after his second season, he went to Portland Trailblazers. In Portland, he was a bit of an afterthought. Playing less minutes than ever, his production also dropped significantly. Never finding his game and role in Portland, Fry moved on to Phoenix Suns, where he became a really integral part of Phoenix offense. Playing alongside Steven Ash and Amari Stoudemire, Fry could thrive as a stretch four. Playing more minutes than ever, Fry averaged double digit points in all four seasons he spent in Phoenix. He even made conference finals in 2010, where his Suns lost to Los Angeles Lakers in six games. Unfortunately, this was the only successful playoff run Fry had, because Phoenix Suns never made the playoffs again, and after 2013-2014 season, Fry moved on to Orlando Magic. In Orlando, Fry played noticeably less and his production wasn't the same, but he was still doing his thing stretching the floor. Orlando Magic didn't see the player they signed to a big contract just a year ago, so during the 2015-2016 season, being just in the second year of his 4 year $32 million deal with the Magic, he was traded to Cleveland Cavaliers. That turned out to be a great day for Channing Fry. Even though his role wasn't gonna increase in Cleveland, he was now playing alongside LeBron James and Kyrie Irving and contending for NBA championship. The goal was achieved in his first year in Cleveland, where Cavaliers historically came back from a 3-1 deficit against Golden State Warriors to claim the NBA championship. He was a contributor during the playoffs, but in the finals Fry was pretty much a non-factor. He played only 4 games out of a 7 and a total of 33 minutes. 
he got his ring though. Next season, he once again made NBA Finals with Cavaliers, played even less, but this time he was on the losing end against the new and improved Warriors with Kevin Durant in the lineup. He started the 2017-2018 season with the Cavaliers, but during NBA trade deadline he was a part of Cavaliers total roster overhaul. Fry was sent to Los Angeles Lakers, which obviously ended his regular season in April. He will become a free agent, so we'll see where he goes next, but LeBron gave him a good gift while he was in Cleveland, a ring. Last but not least, Richard Jefferson, one-time champion with Cleveland Cavaliers in 2016. Before Richard Jefferson came to Cleveland, he was already a player with rich playoff experience. Jefferson spent his first seven years with New Jersey Nets. Except his rookie season, Jefferson was a bona fide star for the Nets team. He increased his role every year and in his best season with the Nets, he averaged 22.6 points per game. It wasn't just regular season though. Jefferson was a regular participant of NBA playoffs as well. In his first two seasons with the Nets, Jefferson made the NBA Finals twice. Unfortunately, both times Western Conference rivals were better. In 2002, Nets got swept by the Lakers and in 2003 they lost in 6 games to San Antonio Spurs. He got close, but he never got the taste of championship champagne. He never got that far in playoffs again, bouncing out in first or second round, but he made the playoffs the first 6 years with the Nets, which is impressive. His last season with the Nets was his best one individually, but the ultimate team goal was never achieved, they never made the playoffs, which was a signal that it's time for change. He spent one season in Milwaukee, was solid, averaging almost 20 points per game, but Milwaukee was a mess at the time and wasn't close to playoff contender. After a year in Milwaukee, Jefferson continued his career in San Antonio. Everyone knows that San Antonio prefers a team game and they rarely play anyone over 30 minutes per game. That was the case with Jefferson. His minutes and production diminished greatly, but he was with a contender now. He made the playoffs two times, but the furthest he got was the second round of the playoffs. In the midst of his third season with the Spurs, he got traded to Golden State Warriors, where he was relegated to bench role and didn't make the playoffs. After that, he spent one more season in Golden State, but wasn't a serious contributor. He made the playoffs, but lost in the first round. After his stint with the Warriors, he moved his talents to Utah. He was starting again, but on a bad team. His time in Utah was short, as after the season, Jefferson went to Dallas Mavericks. Being on a better team along with Dirk Nowitzki, Jefferson was a solid off-the-bench player. Dallas barely made the playoffs and predictably lost in the first round. And then came the NBA Championship. Jefferson signed with the Cleveland Cavaliers and finally got his rink in the first season. Jefferson was an important piece of Cavaliers Championship team, especially in the finals where he boosted team's morale with some good defensive plays and key shots. After he won the championship, Jefferson wanted to retire, but the appeal of possibly being a back-to-back -back champion lured him into one more try. Cavaliers made the finals, but lost to the Warriors. This season, Jefferson was waived by Cavaliers and signed with Denver Nuggets, ending his career with the Cavaliers with two finals appearances and one championship. Jefferson will be 38 years old this summer, so it might turn out that he has already played his last game in the NBA but he got the ring, so his career was a success. That's it. These are 5 NBA veterans who have a ring because they played with LeBron James. Even though they were at the tail end of their careers and couldn't offer their best production, they played an important role and they achieved the ultimate goal of winning the NBA championship. What do you think guys? Which player deserved the ring the most? Which player lucked into an NBA championship? Whatever you want to say, please use the comment section. Like this video and subscribe for future NBA content. This was Purple Prince, and I'm out. Cool, but he ain't like me. A lot of girls like me, niggas wanna fight me. Nigga, get your ass checked like a fucking Nike. Me not icy, that's unlikely. And she gon' suck me like a fucking high seat. On uh, chains on the neck for the whole team. And I feel like Gucci with the ice cream. And my bitch want the Fenty, not the Maybelline.